uh, it's a honor and pleasure uh, to give a talk uh, at this conference. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, and uh, yes, my talk will be about uh, uh, logarithmic aspects of resolution of singularities, uh, both uh, the Young's resolution and classical. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, maybe I should also mention that I sent a link to uh, Russ Lights on my webpage. I sent a link in the chat, maybe it's possible to see it, uh, where you can go forth and back, yeah, and not be stuck with uh, the page. I'm on. So it might be convenient during the talk to see it uh, slides uh, separately. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I was lucky uh, in the sense that my first project where I seriously used the directing structures of Fontaine Luzi uh, was actually a joint project with Luc Luzi. Uh, so I could uh, yeah, study things you know, uh, from Luc himself. Uh, and uh, uh, our project was about uh, Gaber's uh, version of Dion's alpha resolution. Uh, I'll discuss it a bit uh, later. Um, and uh, uh, the intuition uh, of log geometry and confidence in log geometry, which I got during this project, uh, was very helpful for recent advances. Uh, my main part of the talk will be about recent advances in classical Kermax resolution. And it was important, yeah, so it seems uh, not related. I'll try to explain uh, a bit about this. Uh, so the recent advances uh, are completely joint project with Dana Brown and Janet Bodarczyk, yeah, and uh, we extended classical canonical uh, factorial resolution to morphisms, uh, canonical semi-stable reduction type theorems, and also we obtained a much faster and simpler Resolution for uh, algorithm for resolution of singularities, we call it dream algorithm. Uh, it will be just tangential in this talk. I'll mention it a bit, but the uh, main part will be about logarithmic aspects. Uh, ironically, the dream algorithm does not use log geometry at all. Uh, yeah, it was discovered because of log geometry, it does not use it at all. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we won't concentrate on the dream algorithm during this talk. But uh, it has a log variant developed by a student of Abramovich, Minkau Kweck. So it also can be done in a logarithmic setting as well. Good. Uh, now the plan. So we'll talk a bit about altered resolutions, and I'll also mention our joint project uh, we worked on uh, with Luke. And after that, main body of the lecture will be about logarithmic resolution, first of all, motivation formulations. When I'll describe you Hironaka's approach. And after that, I'll explain logarithmic twists one has to do to the classical approach. Okay, let's start with altered resolutions. So uh, to be brief, I just formulate one uh, more or less result which generalizes many things uh, about altered resolution. So we need the notion of alteration of a morphism. What does it mean? So if we are given a dominant morphism, y to x, f from y to x, of integral uh, log schemes or schemes, uh, maybe schemes with trivial uh, log structure, uh, when by an alter char x alteration, we mean a morphism f prime from y prime to x prime, where both y and x were altered. So this compatible pair, y prime to y and x prime to x, which are proper, generically finite, and rank or degree of these alterations is not divisible by any L which is invertible on x. So ideally, we would like it to be one, but uh, best possible which we can do now is to be prime to any L invertible on X. And the theorem from 17, altered resolution of morphisms, says that if you are given a finite type morphism Y to X between integral FS log schemes and uh, generically trivial log structures, and also we have to assume that X is sort of universally resolvable by classical meaning. For example, it's a point, or maybe it's a curve, or maybe it's even a quasi excellent surface because there is classical resolution for surfaces. When there is a log smooth char x alteration to prime to, uh, from y prime to x prime. But is given any such f, we can alter y and x and get a log smooth morphism. So we can resolve morphism in log category. Uh, so a bit of, about history. Altered resolution was first discovered by Dion in 95. He considered the case when dimension of x is at most one, 
mainly point or a tray, so resolution of varieties, or semi-stable reduction uh, over a tray. And also he proved an equivariant version of this group action. After that, the Yonka branch in 96 uh, proved uh, this result in characteristic zero. So we actually, uh, and X is a point. So we actually resolved varieties in characteristic zero by a completely new approach. We proved that the Young's approach is also able to resolve varieties in characteristic zero. Uh, Gaber announced around 2005 that one can also control in positive characteristic, one can control the degree of alterations at least at a single prime L. One can get prime to L uh, alteration, dimension still uh, less or equal one. And in our project with uh, Iluzi in 14, we actually worked out Gabbard's program. It was not that easy, uh, uh, but we managed. And uh, we proved, moreover, that actually one can uh, take any X and not only X bounded uh, by one, dimension bounded by one. This required a slightly different deduction scheme, but we used many ingredients of uh, Gabbard's uh, program. Good. So, so far, and in uh, 17, a few more uh, valuation theoretic techniques were used to strengthen this method further. So, so, so is there a question, Paris? Yes. So, that, so, okay, when you write integral, it's slightly ambiguous because you don't, probably you don't mean, mean, mean integral in the sense of log geometry, mm -hmm. but integral in the sense of uh, scheme theory that is. That's, uh, cor that's correct. That's correct. Moreover, yeah. all my log structures will be FS, okay? Even though, yeah, but you are right, yeah. Okay. Integral and here then, means just uh, integral on the level of varieties. Yeah, and then when you want to make it nicer using uh, alteration, using alteration, then the X prime and Y prime are again supposed to be integral or there could be several irreducible components and just and they, they, the, they, the degrees are the sum. In this case, we assume to be integral, yeah. Ah, okay, so this is a, a okay, I understand, okay. Okay. Yeah, another question? Yeah. Uh, is there a version of this theorem where uh, you don't have log structures, but uh, the altered morphism is literally semi-stable uh, in a sense of- uh, Soon, okay, soon. Okay. In, in a couple <laughs> of slides. Uh, now the method, uh, so uh, the proof, of all these uh, results, yeah, what was found by Dion runs by direct induction on dimension. So morphism of dimension D, we split it to D curves, relative curves, and we resolve them one by one. We start with X zero, which can be resolved. It's a small dimension or by some inductive uh, assumption. And then we resolve F1 and we get X1, which is log smooth. And then we resolve F2 and we get X2, which is log smooth. And uh, a bunch of alterations is collected during this process. But the idea is very simple. Just resolve dimension by dimension, one by one. Uh, this requires uh, to resolve a morphism of relative dimension one. But the role of log geometry here is crystal clear. Relative curve can be resolved only in log category. You cannot make this morphism smooth by any alteration. Only log smooth or semi-stable in the best possible case. Uh, the proof uh, of uh, resolution of morphisms is classical, more or less. It's based on properness of MGN bar, one of proofs. Now we're a few, by the way. And on semi stable reduction of Dilemma Ford, which actually is the first relative resolution result which was discovered. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, control on the rank is done by quotients. So we resolve something equivalently and we divide back so that log smoothness is preserved. And this is called, this, is, this happens if action is so called toroidal or Gaber calls them very thin. Uh, observation. Classical context worked with regular uh, schemes and log structures given by SNC divisors. But everything works even easier if we generalize to log smooth or log regular log schemes. Moreover, this generality is critical when we want to divide by the toroidal action because making action toroidal, so called torification theorems, uh, work only in the general context of log regular. Uh, log schemes. By the way, it was discovered uh, by De Jong and Abramovich in their work in 96. And the word torification is just uh, a joke. When it was discovered and they saw that it works, uh, Abramovich wrote an email to De Jong uh, that's terrific. Yeah, terrific, terrific. So it's just play of words. Uh, okay, good. 
Uh, now, what can we deduce from this uh, sort of principle, uh, which uh, I think uh, works often, is that once log structures are used, uh, there is no reason to be stuck with smooth and SNC. You should better go to the general context of log smooth uh, or log regular schemes and morphisms. In a sense, from the point of view of log geometry, all FS monoids are equal, like all animals are equal. And if needed, you can after that improve and combinatorially by a separate routine. And here is a theorem I was asked about, a theorem with Abdi Prozit and Liu, with semi-stable reduction for morphisms. If uh, in the altered resolution theorem, which I formulated uh, two slides before, you can in addition achieve that y prime and x prime are regular and log structures are given by SNC divisors. So you can uh, achieve more. Uh, uh, literally, this is the best possible resolution of morphisms. Locally, parameters on x are just products on, pro, uh, on x prime, are products of parameters on y prime. And it is deduced from uh, uh, the theorem on two slides before by hard combinatorial methods. All you have to do is to improve monoids by uh, blowing up uh, by subdivisions. Uh, yeah, but it's a really difficult combinatorial method. It's sort of relative version of the main combinatorial result of KKMS, lattice polytops, which is also difficult. You know? OK. And now uh, that's all that I wanted to tell about altered resolution. We have one principle to take with us. And let's see how this worked to uh, classical resolution. Uh, so the rest of the talk is about joint project with Abramovich and Vodarshik on resolution of singularities over a field K of characteristic zero. For simplicity, we always work with uh, varieties, finite type over field K. Uh, we can deal with larger generality, but for lecture purposes, we stick with this. Uh, our goal is to resolve morphisms, uh, log varieties, and a bit I'll tell about uh, a dream algorithm. References for the talk. Uh, so logarithmic resolution is done in two papers. First of all, we resolved logarithmic varieties in uh, 17. This is already published. And now there is a submitted paper about extension to morphisms. Uh, in addition, there are two papers on dream algorithms, a paper without uh, log structures and a paper with log structures by Quack, a student of Dan. OK, and now motivation for this project. Uh, main motivation is as follows. We wanted to improve uh, this result about the resolution of morphisms, which in characteristic zero is due to Abramovich uh, uh, and Carl. Uh, Dion's method uh, is not canonical. And even if we are given a morphism with large smooth locus, we have no control on smooth locus. It can be destroyed. Because we have to choose this vibration, it's not canonical, and we have no control. Uh, so main goals of a new project were, first of all, resolve morphisms so that log smooth locus is preserved. In particular, proof semi-stable reduction over non-discrete variation rings. Hiranaka, uh, Hiranaka's theorem implies semi-stable reduction over discrete variation ring. It's sort of accident. Uh, uh, but uh, for non-discrete, the only thing you can do is to spread out, get a family over a high dimensional base and try to resolve where. And you want your genetic fiber to be, uh, which is smooth, to be preserved. So one needs to use something new. Uh, second, uh, do this as functorial as possible. Try to do it canonically. Try to do it compatible with base extensions. Hironaka semi-stable reduction is not compatible with Remifet extension of the tray, and our method will be so uh, functoriality. Third, clarify the role of log geometry in classical resolution. Okay, uh, just a minute. I'll explain what it means. Now, the only hope. Uh, was to use Hironaka's embedded resolution method. Why? Because this is the only canonical method we have. As I explained, mainly there are two methods to uh, uh, prove resolution in any dimension, Dion's method and Hironaka's method. And uh, Dion's is not canonical for sure. So we hoped to use Hironaka's method, but for log smooth ambient varieties and not for smooth ambient varieties. So just shift completely to log geometry of Hironaka's method. And why we hope that this is possible? It, yeah, not only because we do not have any other two. We had some indication uh, 
expectation. And this was because in Hiroaka's approach, there are signatures of log geometry. I will point where. And the hope was that due to this monoidal democracy principle, if there is log geometry in Hironaka method, it should work for general uh, uh, log smooth uh, stuff. So this was actually, this principle was, uh, you know, it gave us some hope to, to start it. Um, okay. And now uh, a couple of words about classical resolutions. So uh, classical resolution aims to take an integral variety Z this time just variety and not log variety, so it's not, uh, uh, no confusion is possible. And uh, it wants to find a modification Z rest to Z with uh, smooth Z rest. Hironaka in 64 proved that it exists and got Fields Medal for this. Uh, and then many people tried to understand what Hironaka did and simplify and Hironaka himself also worked on this a lot. In 70s, Hironaka Giro uh, found a notion of maximal contact, which will be important later. Villamayor and Birsten Milton, Milman independently in, in 70s and 90s constructed an algorithm, not just existence, they constructed an algorithm how to resolve canonical singularities. And since then, actually, the only algorithm which was available was this algorithm of Villamayor and Birsten Milman. It's essentially the same. Many different proofs were given or constructions, but the algorithm is the same. So our logarithmic algorithm was sort of the first one which is really new. And uh, Vladarchik in 2005 proved that their algorithm, in fact, satisfies stronger property, not only canonical, it's uh, factorial for all smooth morphisms. If Z prime over Z is smooth, then uh, the resolution of Z prime is pullback of resolution of Z. Uh, of Z. Uh, and uh, this is stronger claim, and it is easier to prove, uh, as often happens with inductive arguments. And also it proves equivariant resolution, so it's useful for applications. Now, uh, about our uh, results. So in 17, we constructed an analog of classical algorithm in a logarithmic world. So if we want to resolve morphisms, it's clear that you should go to a logarithmic world. And I also gave a few more reasons why, why to do it. Uh, now, morphisms are, are complicated things. So if you want to do something logarithmic, start with varieties. Just, uh, you know, develop something. So, uh, Hironaka uh, theorem resolves log varieties. Just resolve variety, resolve uh, the divisor given toroidal structure, and you get uh, resolution. But um, uh, we constructed an algorithm which is not only logarithmic, it's functorial with respect to all log smooth morphisms. This functoriality is completely out of reach for Hironaka. It's something new and it's important. In logarithmic world, you must work uh, logarithmically. Yeah, so functoriality also is much stronger here. This was the main novelty uh, and the method itself. And then in uh, the next paper in SQL, we proved that this algorithm developed in 17 actually works for morphisms. Just the same algorithm works for morphisms. It constructs a modification of X so that X rest to B is log smooth, but it uh, may fail if dimension of B is larger than one. Uh, but it fails for good reason. It fails for the reason that sometimes you have also to modify B. If dimension of B is larger than one, it can be possible that you have also to modify B. So a new ingredient uh, was uh, to prove that there exists a modification of B. So that after modification, the base change already can be resolved by the algorithm of 70. So when you modify B enough, you can resolve. Moreover, this will be compatible with any phasor base change. So it's completely up to existence. It's independent of the base. It's compatible with base changes. And uh, 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 so far in the archive version, uh, H is not canonical. So resolution is canonically only relatively once you choose some B. But we are working on canonical uh, modification of B2, it will be done. So we are in the middle of this work, but it's clear that it will be done. So these are the new things about uh, logarithm. And now uh, I formulated, I gave motivation, I gave formulations. Now I'll describe classical algorithm. And in the end, I'll explain how it can be twisted to logarithmic version. Okay. Uh, so all canonical methods before uh, our work uh, actually constructed essentially the same algorithm. Uh, you can work locally because you are building something canonical. So if you do it locally, 
when it glues automatically. Uh, the resolution is embedded. One locally embeds X into a manifold. By manifold, I always mean a smooth variety in this talk. And then works with a pair. So one uh, uh, looks for blowups of uh, the embed manifold so that MRS is uh, smooth and uh, some transform, certain transform of X, which is the pullback minus few copies of, ex of exceptional devices. Uh, so transform of X is the resolution of X. Uh, Fantorial embedded resolution implies Fantorial non-embedded because embedding is essentially unique. I will not stop on this question, but this reduction from non-embedded to embedded is simple. Uh, main choices. Uh, it turns out that this classical algorithm makes a lot of choices, uh, which look so natural that people just uh, are not aware that they, they really are done. So uh, first choice, the most natural one, uh, is that uh, we only blow up smooth centers. Why? Because we want this ambient space M to be smooth throughout our algorithm. So, uh, so we constructed a sequence of blow ups. MI is blown up at smooth center VI, and we get a smooth MI plus one. So, this will be the notation. Uh, transforms. Uh, and by the way, I want to say that already one is a really is a decision. And in our algorithm, its centers will be different. And in weighted in dream algorithm, its centers are different. So, one can play even with this choice, it's, it's essential. Transforms. Uh, well, in Herodox approach, you pull back X, X and subtract the multiple of the exceptional divisor. The most natural thing you can do, yeah. Uh, if you pull back completely, you definitely get something which cannot be smooth because it has few components. It has uh, copies of exceptional divisor. So you, at least you must remove some copies of exception. Uh, choice of centers. Uh, there is an invariant in the algorithm. Uh, I'll describe it uh, a bit later. But the main component of this uh, invariant is the order of ideal defining X. Uh, so the order, I'll explain a bit later what it is, but it's something very natural you can imagine. It's a very crude primary invariant. Uh, history. In addition, the usual algorithm will run into a loop if you just use this primary invariant. I'll give example uh, in a couple of minutes. And because of this, it has to use history. It cannot work without history. And uh, history is given by exceptional SNC divisor E. And the number of components at a point will be another primary invariant. So, and finally, induction. This algorithm also runs by induction, but it's not induction of dimension and in induction by uh, vibration. It's induction of co-dimension. It's induction on hypersurface and then hypersurface and hypersurface and so on. So in this embed manifold, we'll choose a maximal contact hypersurface so that the problem can be restricted to it. And uh, so on. So this is the mechanism of induction. So actual invariant will be D1, S1, and then D2, S2, the invariance on the maximal contact, and then the invariance of the next maximal contact, and so on. So it's a sequence of 2N invariants. Uh, OK, good. And now history. Uh, classical algorithm, uh, uh, in addition to subtle inductive structure, it must encode history. And with our choices, no history does not exist. And here's an example, an example of no progress. Let's take uh, ambient manifold A4. Let's take hypersurface given by vanishing of x square minus yzt. Yeah, uh, it's a hypersurface with singularity. Uh, locus, which is just union of three coordinate uh, uh, lines, x, uh, uh, y, y axis, z axis, I think. Y, okay, it, it contains of a union of three lines. It consists of union of three lines, and there is a symmetry by permuting y z t as free symmetry, uh, and in this singular singular locus, uh, the only s three covariant subscheme containing zero is zero. So if we want to find something canonical, it must blow up equivalent centers. And then it can only blow up zero. If we blow up zero and consider a chart of this blow up, then the pullback looks like uh, y prime square times the same expression in new coordinates. 
that this, uh, the total, the pullback of X consists of something which is X prime is just looks like X and two copies of exceptional divisor. So after removing exceptional divisor, we just are stuck with the same equation. It does not improve. And if we have no memory, we'll do the same and the same and we'll never stop. And a similar computation shows that even with the umbrella, when you blow up pinch point, you again get a pinch point. So Hironaka's algorithm must use history, uh, but using weighted blow ups and not just blow ups. We have constructed in 19 a dream algorithm, which is just as simple as possible. It uh, defines invariant. It says which center to choose, which center with maximal invariant. You blow it up and invariant drops and there is no history at all. Okay, good. And because there is no history, actually one does not have to consider exceptional divisor in this algorithm and uh, it, it works without those types. Good. Uh, now uh, about the boundary. Uh, so uh, why uh, history is encoded in the boundary in Hiralax approach? It's very simple. Once we blow up M and get some M prime, any point X on the exceptional divisor has a God given coordinate T. It is unique after unique. And it comes from the history of the resolution. So if we want to make some uh, less choices and remember history, we should use this coordinate always in all our computations. And what, what this is what Hironaka does. So inductively for a sequence of uh, some manifold blow ups, we define a total uh, boundary to be pre-image of the ice boundary and the new boundary. And we call it uh, the accumulated uh, boundary of M, of M I plus one, sorry. Uh, we always work with coordinate system T1, Tn, such that both new center and the boundary at this stage can be expressed in these coordinates. Uh, in such case, one actually says that EI and VI have simple normal crossings. Uh, this means that uh, uh, VI lies in few components of exceptional divisor and it's transversal to the union of the other components. So, um, uh, and we call the boundary coordinates exceptional or monomial and even denote them differently, M M1 up to MR. So our uh, uh, coordinate system uh, has some usual coordinates where we have choices and exceptional coordinates, which are God given up to units. Uh, and uh, uh, in this, uh, if one blows up only such VIs, it's automatically that the boundary will be simple, normal crossing at any stage. And if I would blow up a smooth center, which have, uh, which is not transversal, then it can happen that I destroyed the boundary and the next boundary would be non-smooth. So it's sort of must. If we want to use boundary as SNC divisor, we must blow up something like this. So this restricts, our center small. No role of the boundary, good news, is that once we use monomial coordinates, we have less choices. Uh, yeah, this is what we wanted, we avoid loops. And also boundary can accumulate part of I. So we'll split I in the sequel as I monomial, where I monomial is maximal monomial invertible ideal and I pure, which, uh, which, is, uh, which cannot be divided by monomials. Uh, the splitting will be essential just in a minute. Uh, band use, uh, in fact, the other side of the same coin. First of all, we must treat E and monomial coordinates with a special care. Uh, and uh, less possibilities for coordinates, so sometimes it's also a, a problem. Okay, good. Uh, now, many technical complications of the classical algorithm actually are caused by the fact that the badly separate regular and exceptional coordinates. And I'll, I'll point out where this happens. So, uh, and first of all, in the definition of order, we have two classes of coordinates, but in Hironaka's approach, they are mixed. And in our approach after, we'll separate them completely, as you'll see. Good. Uh, now, principalization. Uh, so this idea of splitting I as monomial part and pure part uh, actually uh, is reflected as follows. Uh, by a principalization problem, we mean the following. Uh, all algorithms of embedded resolution do the following thing. First of all, once we embed X into M, replace it by ideal I 
on n and only work with ideal. From now on, we ignore geometry of x completely. We just work with ideal. Yeah, geometry of m and ideal on it. And we solve the following principalization problem. Find the sequence of blow-ups uh, as above of uh, mm, manifolds with boundary, uh, such that the pullback of i to mn is invertible and monomial. So just it becomes uh, what I wrote i mon and i pure is completely killed, no pure part. It means that it's just supported on en. It looks like a different problem, but it turns out to be equivalent to embedded resolution. If you are given embedded resolution, you can uh, pass to, okay, no, no, it, it, sorry, it's stronger, it's stronger. Uh, in theory, it's stronger. Uh, so the magic is that uh, the last non-empty strict transform of X, let's denote it XL in ML, actually is a component of VL. And because of this, it must be smooth and transversal. The L is uh, smooth and uh, have simple normal crossings with the L. So the magic is that if you can solve principalization problem, then you automatically solve the embedded resolution problem. So from now on, we'll discuss principalization uh, problem. So we replace geometric problem by more algebraic problem about ideals. Uh, so, uh, moreover, principalization not only solves XL, it solves also uh, the history divisor. It achieves, since XL and EL have simple normal crossings, the restriction of L to XL is uh, SNC. So we wanted to solve one problem and we solved a stronger logarithmic problem. This gives a strong smell of log geometry and this was one of indications that log geometry is lurking behind Hironaka's approach. A uh, great profit, working with ideal provides a lot of flexibility as we'll immediately see. Okay, uh, order reduction. So main invariant of the algorithm, as I told, is the order. The order of pure part, because monomial part is sort of our friend, yeah? Pure part is our enemy. We want to decrease the pure part. Uh, so uh, the order is defined as minimal order of elements of the ideal and uh, it's uh, as natural as you can imagine. At the origin, the order of x squared minus y z squared is two. Yeah, it's given by this monomial. And the order of such a guy is five because of this monomial. Okay. And in addition, one works not just with ideal, one works with uh, so-called weighted or marked ideals, i comma d, where d is a number. And uh, this number indicates what types of transforms we want to do. D says that we want to remove D copies of exception. So we only use blow ups along with centers, which are contained in the locus uh, where the order of I is at least D. So we call such a locus I comma D singular. It's singular support of the marked ideal I comma D. And if we blow up such a center, it's automatically that we can update I by pulling it back and dividing by this power of exceptional divisor. So this guarantees that we can divide by this power. If we uh, walk, uh, we blow up the locus where the order was at least D, then we'll get at least D, power, D copies of exception and we can subtract it. For example, we only already saw such example, we blew, blew up X squared minus Y ZT and we removed two copies of exceptional divisor. Uh, order reduction finds a sequence of blow ups with boundaries. Yeah, just uh, to save space, I did not put here the boundaries, uh, which, which are I comma D admissible in the following sense. Uh, in, the se in, in, in this sense, yeah, in the sense of blowing up only such, only such centers. And uh, other reduction not only blows up such centers, it finds a sequence so with uh, I N comma D singular uh, is empty. So it managed uh, to get i n so that uh, its order is uh, at any point is less, strictly less than d. Yeah, so we blow up points where order was more than d and we drop below d. So we sort of reduce the order of i below d. Now in principle, existence 
of such thing immediately implies principalization. Just take d equal one. Yeah, just start with ideal and kill it completely uh, using uh, yeah such transforms and uh, factoring out monomial parts at each step. And remark, uh, the main case actually is not d equal one. The main case is d equal to order of IPO. It's the most natural thing. Our uh, uh, invariant says that the maximal problem happens where the order is maximal. So try to reduce the maximal order and, and then next and, and so on. So uh, the main case is maximal order case. But for inductive reasons, uh, we also have to deal with the case when D is not uh, the order of pure part, but something small. So uh, it's sort of bad karma inherited uh, on maximal contact from uh, the general problem. Okay, good. And now uh, we go to a uh, concrete part. Uh, just one or two slides about, uh, you know, concrete work. So maximal contact. Uh, the miracle which enables induction on dimension and the miracle which only happens in characteristic zero, we have no idea what to do in characteristic P, uh, no analog of such a uh, phenomenon, is that uh, in the maximal order case, yeah, in the case when uh, D is just the order of I, uh, the other reduction of I comma D is equivalent to the other reduction of so-called coefficient ideal CI uh, restricted to a hypersurface H of maximal contact uh, with uh, order D factorial. So any blow up sequence which reduces order of CI on H gives rise to a blow up sequence which reduces the order of I comma D. Just uh, blow up something in H and then blow up something in strict transform of H and so on. So just the same sequence induces a sequence of blow-ups of the ambient manifold. Uh, CI is, uh, yeah, as I said, coefficient ideal, and I, H is hypersurface of maximal contact. Now, the main example, how this look? Uh, let's assume that I is just given by a single equation, so hypersurface. Uh, and in such case, we can always choose coordinates T equal to T1 and up to Tn, so what? This element will look like T to the D plus a2 t d minus 2 and so on plus a d where a i depends on t2 up to t uh, at least uh, formally locally and then uh, h is very simple it's just vanishing locus of t and c i also is something very simple is just the ideal generated by coefficients hence the name coefficient ideal coefficients but with correct weights we want a2 to be a weight 2 and they did to be a weight D. So we take uh, integral weights, which uh, put them in the same gradient. And uh, remarks, why such a definition? Why coefficient ideal? Uh, the reason is the following. Uh, if I try to take uh, just I and restrict it to H, when I just keep AD restricted to H, this loses a lot of information, no way that it will be equivalent to my original problem. I want to restrict all coefficients to H, but uh, when I kill T, <laughs> I must somehow keep information. What was the degree of each coefficient? And it's clear that they should be of the weights, which I wrote here. So it's just a way to, way to keep all information about this equation on H. And uh, uh, A1 equals zero, this is the place where we, where we really use characteristic zero assumption. Otherwise, it's not possible to kill the coefficient of t to d minus one, and uh, it will immediately be clear why this is so important. Okay, good. Uh, now, I gave you example, which completely illustrates the main mechanism of algorithm, but uh, it has choices, a lot of choices. I just cho chose uh, some coordinates. So the question is, if it's possible to do this without choices, the answer is yes. It's done by use of derivations. So main tool for a choice-free description is to consider deriv deriv derivation ideal of i, uh, denoted di, is generated by i and by all derivations of its elements. 
and iterated derivation will be denoted dn of i. And now note that derivation decreases the order of ideal just by one. Yeah, there is at least one partial derivation which will decrease the order, it's obvious. So because of this, derivation provides conceptual way to define all basic ingredients. And uh, the order is just minimal d such that this derivation of the ideal is trivial one, order zero. Maximal contact. See, if I derive my ideal d minus one times, its order becomes one. So there is an element of order one. Element of order one defines a smooth hypersurface. Any such smooth hypersurface is uh, the maximal contact uh, hypersurface. In uh, this example, uh, when we have no A1, T itself, if I derive uh, D minus one time, I kill all these parts and uh, I'll only uh, have uh, T. Uh, so uh, maximal contact also is defined uh, using uh, this. Uh, uh, derivation ideal and coefficient ideal again is just weighted sum of derivations so more or less the same as we had before uh, remark the only serious difficulty in improving independence of choices now is independence of choice of uh, this t there might be few maximal contacts one must prove independence it's a headache of the algorithm is the most subtle point i'll not discuss it in this talk but there is something to do yeah uh, up to choice of this maximal contact, I more or less described all, uh, all ingredients. Uh, okay, good. Uh, now, uh, complications of the classical algorithm. So it has two complications, and this is uh, related to use of usual derivations instead of logarithmic ones. So model of logarithmic derivations is spanned by logarithmic derivations mj delta mj and delta ti uh, for regular TIs. Now, these are precisely the derivations which preserve uh, the exceptional divisor, take its maximal ideal to itself. For almost all needs, it's easier, more conceptual, easier for computation, whatever you want, to work with logarithmic derivations once we want to keep E in the picture. But we cannot compute the order using logarithmic derivations. This is the problem. We must use all derivations. And uh, because of this, Hironaka's approach runs into two complications, two following complications. First, uh, it says us how to choose H. Yeah, uh, this maximal contact is chosen using the uh, derivation ideal. This derivation ideal has no idea what is exceptional divisor, just no relation. Because of this, it might happen that E is not transversal to H. In such case, I cannot restrict E onto H by getting something S and C. I can restrict as log uh, scheme, but uh, yeah, it will, won't be log smooth. And because of this, uh, we have no control on transversality to E. So the algorithm we can run on H will not be transversal to E and we destroy all our inductive scheme. So uh, how one resolves this? It turns out that all new, except if we start to blow up H, all new components will be transversal to H. So the problem is only with the old boundary. So because of this, the solution is to walk, uh, to remember, uh, to work with stratification of H by the old boundary, by the number of components of old boundaries. So we define a secondary invariant or second primary invariant as old. The number of old components uh, of the boundary and we, uh, walk, we first of all walk where this as all this maximal and when where it's next and so on. I'll not go to details because in our algorithm, we get rid of all this mess, but this is uh, existing. It's a headache of usual algorithm. And this is the reason why the initial uh, invariant is not just D, it's the order and the number of components because at this stage, the E is our enemy and we have somehow to bypass this complication. And second complication is that it can happen that the order of i is larger than d, but the order of pure part is smaller than d. Uh, because monomial coordinates contribute to the order. And in such case, we cannot proceed just by looking only at the pure part. We cannot just say, okay, let's take pure part and, uh, and reduce because it's already reduced below d. In such case, we have to take into account 
the order of I monomial, and we'll have to work with stratification where the order of monomial is large enough. Again, we'll have to stratify our picture and to run something different. And there is a solution outlined here. I will not discuss it because again, it's not essential uh, for our new algorithm. Maybe I'll only mention that even when IPUA is empty, still for inductive reasons, you have to get rid of, mono, of monomial part and it's done by purely combinatorial step, but uh, again, something should be done. And uh, okay. And this combinatorial step, actually we have an analog, but much simpler than our new algorithm. Okay, good. So uh, we are done with classical algorithm and now we have uh, about 10, 15 minutes to discuss the logarithmic twist and logarithmic algorithms. So what is the boundary? Uh, before we go further, uh, let's really understand what is the boundary. Because so far I only hinted that in Hironaka's algorithm, there are some logarithmic ingredients. Sometimes they uh, help, sometimes they are against us, but there are some. Uh, now, uh, so let's think about boundary. Typically, and this was well, my first before I started, uh, I was familiar with uh, uh, logarithmic geometry. I thought that uh, this is a divisor. And I think now that this is wrong to view uh, boundary as a divisor. Unlike embedded scheme X, you should not think of, of, of E as a sub scheme. Uh, even because there is no map of pairs M prime E prime to M E. When you blow up, you increase the pullback of your boundary. So E prime is not mapped to E. It may happen that E is empty and the new boundary is not empty. So it's not map of pairs of schemes. Just even by functoriality, E is not a subscheme. It's not good to view it as a subscheme. But if we view this guy as a morphism of log schemes, this makes perfect sense. Uh, it's just a morphism of log schemes where we consider log structure associated to this uh, SNC divisor. Moreover, this is excellent uh, log scheme. It's log smooth log scheme. Uh, and uh, yeah, and moreover, the sheaf of monomials, uh, yeah, uh, which are invertible outside of E, yeah, this log structure uh, is precisely what we need from E. In Hironaka's algorithm, we just factor the ideal to monomial part and non-monomial and to factor out a monomial part, we just use this sheaf of monomials. So in a sense, Hironaka invented in this particular case, uh, uh, the notion of log scheme, yeah? In very particular case. Uh, okay, and uh, logarithmic uh, parameters. So uh, we'll work with log smooth log varieties. For shortness, I'll just say uh, toroidal varieties. And uh, but it's the same, yeah, just classical toroidal varieties are the same as log smooth log varieties. And locally, where of the form spec of K uh, bracket M, bracket T1, TL, where T1, TL are regular parameters and M is just sharp FS monoid, uh, okay? And we view TI as regular coordinates and all elements of M will be monomial coordinates uh, at the origin of T. So now we don't have uh, good monomials and bad monomials uh, because this M uh, can be complicated. Uh, also, uh, um, logarithmic derivations, yeah, uh, differentials, differentials of t comma m, yeah, it means logarithmic di differentials. Uh, this model is freely generated by uh, differentials of t1, tl, and uh, delta mj, yeah, dmj over mj, where mj now can be any basis of mgp. Yeah, I don't care if uh, this is a basis of m or not, m does not have to be free. And uh, just any basis of MGP is good for me. Uh, please pay attention, I'm in characteristic zero. Yeah, so this is the reason I can take any basis. Uh, and uh, even of MGP tensor Q, I can take. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, fact I prefer to say as a principle of monomial democracy, we'll come to it a bit later. Uh, from now on, M does not have to be free. There is no canonical base of MGP and all monomials for us are equal. 
Yeah, uh, like all, mono all of his monoids are equal and all monomials inside such monoid are equal. Uh, remark, uh, the most interesting feature of the new algorithm is font reality with respect to Kummer log et al covers. Yeah, I told that it's compatible with any log smooth morphism, but Kummer log et al is probably the most surprising and the most interesting one because in usual situation, they look like ramified covers. They are not smooth, so why should you expect any compatibility? So for example, if we extract roots of monomial coordinates in classical setting, our resolution is compatible with such operation. And Hironako obviously not. Or in the case of semi-stable reduction, we can extract your roots of uniformizer of the base. We can consider uh, ground uh, field extension, which is ramified. And still this is compatible with our algorithm. And uh, it's out of reach and also unnatural for classical algorithm, but it's very natural for logarithmic life. Uh, well, now main results about logarithmic algorithms. So ignoring the orbital aspect, uh, which I uh, hinted at in the beginning and uh, in the last slide, we'll discuss it a bit. Uh, if we ignore it, then log principalization says that given a toroidal variety T and an ideal on this OT, in uh, on T, we can find a sequence of admissible blowings up of toroidal varieties. I'll say you later which admissibility this time we give uh, Tn to T, such that the pullback of I to Tn is monomial. So it's just direct generalization to logarithmic setting of uh, principalization. And this sequence is compatible with log smooth morphisms. Again, log smooth font reality is essential. Here. And uh, as a uh, uh, this implies that in classical situation, uh, as in the classical, given any integral logarithmic variety X, there exists a modification X rest to X, such that X rest is log smooth. And this is factorial again, in a strong sense. Yeah, the main novelty is strong from there. And also, as I mentioned, both principalization and log resolution, this algorithm work also in relative situation for morphisms, yeah, uh, good. Now about the method and please pay attention. We, yeah, we have something like seven minutes. We have just four slides, but uh, after we work we have done now, it's really will be very simple. So in brief, we want to log adjust all parts of classical algorithm. That is, we want to put log at any place we can. Okay, so Let's I, I want, uh, I just was confused about your, in log uh, principalization, the ideal, uh, maybe I didn't quite understand what a, a toroidal variety ah, is. Uh, monomial and uh, invertible. It should be also invertible. I forgot to say, invertible no, and I, monomial. Yeah, but uh, the the ideal. So the toroidal variety has a log structure in your. Yes. And and the ideal is any coherent ideal or is related to the log structure. No, any ideal. Any, any ideal. ideal. But then the the if you want to. Uh, okay, you didn't explain what it means. I okay. did not. Uh, you, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. I increase log structures, you can imagine. Uh, okay. In brief, we want to log adjust all parts. So, how we do it? Log order of i is the minimal d such where d log d of the ideal is trivial. So, we just replaced d by d log. Maximal contact is any hypersurface given by vanishing of t, where t is regular coordinate. And it means it's coordinate whose log order is one. So in D log D minus one, there are elements of order one. Take any of them, it defines you a maximal contact. Such maximal contact is automatically toroidal. If I take vanishing locus of monomial coordinate, I will not get something toroidal. But here, if I take vanishing locus of such guy, it's always toroidal. Coefficient ideal, again, weighted sum of uh, logarithmic derivations. Uh, the only new thing, is what does it mean to be to have i comma d admissible uh, blow up? So we allow this time to blow up any j such way. First of all, i is contained in this power of j. And this is with d admissibility. If uh, i is contained in j comma d, then the pullback of i can be divided by this power of pullback of j. That is, I can remove d times the exceptional device. So this is just to be able to remove d, d times. And second, j is generated by a few regular coordinates and few monomials. And I don't care for monomials. 
it's democracy. You can take any set of monomials. So any monomial ideal can be blown up. And uh, uh, obviously this destroys smoothness, but this preserves log smoothness. So in log smooth context, I'm allowed to do such a thing. I have more possibilities for blow ups. And uh, uh, in fact, I just blow up what we call submonomial ideal. It's monomial ideal on logarithmic submanifold given by vanishing of T1, Tn. Uh, and uh, after blowing up such a thing, I add its uh, exception divisor to the monomial structure, increase monomial structure as in the classical algorithm. Good. Now, infinite log order. So a strange thing, which happens, a new thing, is that log order of TIs is what? But log order of monomials is infinite by this definition. Because when I take D log of monomial, uh, I keep a multiple of the same monomial where I give values of D log. Uh, eigenfunctions. So uh, we behave like zero, where log order is infinite. And this is the main novelty. And this is the novelty which allows functionality with respect to extracting roots of monomials, Kummer covers. Because on a Kummer cover, my monomial, which was, for example, M, can become square of something else. But its order must be the same if my algorithm is compatible with Kummer covers. All invariants must be compatible. And the only way to be compatible is to, to say that its order is infinite. Derivations are not able to treat uh, monomials, and you should give up and not insist as in uh, Hironaka's approach. Uh, so as a price, we have to do something special when the log order of i is infinite. But this something special is very simple. And in fact, it was discovered by colors by color a few years ago, before, before our work. And it just uh, says that. Uh, you should consider ideal i mod, minimal ideal, which contains i. For example, if i is given by uh, uh, vanishing of element sum of m i's t to i, we just take the ideal generated by coefficients, monomial coefficients, blow this up, and divide by this pullback. What you get, you kill one of these coefficients. So on the pullback, the other becomes finite. So there is very simple, completely combinatorial blow up, monomial blow up which makes your order finite. And after that, you proceed as usual. You take maximum contact and uh, run induction on uh, the dimension. Our algorithm is simpler. It avoids both complications I mentioned. Maximal contact always is given by a regular coordinate. So it's always transversal to the monomial structure. It's always toroidal automatically on the nose. And in a sense, we completely separate de dealing with regular coordinates via log order and dealing with monomial coordinates which is done by combinatorics, by toroidal blow up, by monomial blow up. And the invariant now also is much simpler. It's just string of others, d1 up to dn is di, just natural numbers. And the last one is, is a zero infinity, just like infinity or just something like that. OK. And uh, uh, is always so elementary based with cheating. And I say that there is a cheating, and cheating is that a drawback of monomial democracy is that the algorithm has no idea when monomial is a power of another monomial. And sometimes, because of weights, it insists to blow up a fractional power of monomial. We call it Kummer monomial. It's monomial on Kummer cover, but not on, uh, yeah, it's monomial in lo Kummer locker. Uh, how can we blow up such a thing? Well, we can try to walk logital uh, Kummer locally. We can pass to the Galois cover where this root exists, blow up where, and then divide Boyack by, by the Galois group. <laughs> Excellent idea, but it, uh, yeah, and we did not expect complication here because of log uh, uh, font reality. But uh, it turned out that this action after blow up becomes not toroidal. So when we divide back, we get something which is not log smooth. Because of this, we must divide back as a stack, so-called not representable modification, uh, which we call Kummer blow up. Blow up of uh, Kummer ideal, which contains, which is ideal in Kummer topology. And uh, it can be done, it can be made uh, principle invertible, but only by non-representable Kummer blow up. And this is okay for applications because after that we can remove stacky structure by a terrification algorithm, the same algorithm as used in Geiber approach and by the Abramovich, Dionk, and, and others, by terrification or justification, we can 
actually removes stacky structure and uh, uh, but the last uh, step with verification will be compatible only with respect to smooth morphisms. So in order to be log factorial, we must also work with stacks with non-representable modifications. So the stage which is uh, uh, log smooth factorial, in fact, only work in the world of stacks. So we must enlarge our context to log smooth and then also to stacks. And now last slide, uh, there is an example where I show the difference between classical and uh, non-classical situation and show when uh, non-representable Kummer blow up is needed. And uh, I'll not stop here because I'm, uh, I'm out of time. And last remark, these weighted blow ups, which we discovered here, uh, we blow up T1 up to Tn and uh, M with weight D. Uh, but it can be done more generally for once we discovered weighted blow ups in stack theoretic context, we ask what can be done to classical algorithm. It turned out that usual weighted blow ups of TIs of coordinates on AN with weights D1 up to DR uh, is in fact core space of a non-representable modification, which is smooth. And E1 works with weighted blow ups and considers just usual centers, which are predicted by Hironaka, just maximal contact centers with well weights. But you do the correct blow up when you get the dream algorithm I talked about. So actually it's also, it was always hidden in Hironaka's approach, but just people did not know what are the correct tools to work with. Uh, one have to work with correct weights, one have to work with stacks, and then it's possible to, to get a simplest algorithm one can imagine. I uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, there's one question from Q&A um, from Bondarko. So which paper is cited as T17, if any? Uh, 17 is the paper in uh, Jim's. Uh, it's, uh... oops, just a minute. Uh... Yeah, 17 is principalization of ideals on logarithmic orbitals. Then, just T17. Ah, no, it's, it was, a, uh, so it's just, Vlodarchik is everywhere in all these works, yeah, so. Okay. Not intentionally. It was ATW17. So there are other questions? I uh, wanted to make some sort ah, of... Ah, uh, uh, sorry, just a minute, just a minute. Maybe, maybe I was, just a minute, let me see. Where is this AT? No. no. Yeah, yeah. This it was, was asked already at 4.35, no, at 35, um, at 11.35. Uh, sorry, say it again. I, I can't No, at 10.35, sorry. No, I'm saying this, uh, this question was asked already on uh, at 10.35 a.m. Ah, I think, uh, Uh, okay, oh, well, okay, so, so are there any uh, other questions? Uh, just uh, uh, concerning uh, some, some comments in your talk related to my work, so you mentioned the tonification, yes. which uh, you said this is used in my approach, and in fact, as far as I remember, you you mentioned it in 2012 as a, as a possible simplification, so what I did is I used the the canonical desingularization yes. of some quotient, uh, in the, and then uh, uh, you suggested to use tonification, which actually works, but it was not done in the in the book. It was uh, I don't know if this is what you meant about tonification in related to my uh, yeah uh, I meant I meant uh, yeah offer I meant that there are few algorithms for tonification. Your algorithm indeed used the resolution, An initial algorithm of. Uh, Dion Kabramovich uh, used some uh, as a trick, but in all in all arguments I know, you must go to log smooth setting. You cannot do it only with uh, smooth and SNC. And uh, uh, it will it would be possible also in your approach to use uh, clarification of Abramovich, but okay, it was not used. But Brafio uh, okay, and now also Brav works on so-called destacification, 
generalization of these two stacks. It's also similar algorithm, a few, few versions, uh, but all of them somehow must work with log smooth and not just. Okay, now concerning the classical the singularization of one, so you have uh, uh, Villamayo, I mean, uh, yes, and then uh, Gerson Milman who I think there was another paper by Sinas and Villamayo. So I, I was, I think I, I read some time ago in the mass reviews of some of this that the, that the algorithm is not exactly the same. Sometimes they are different combinat different yeah, order yeah, of steps. Yes. It's not it's not exactly the same. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah. it's let's say so. Okay. Uh, yeah. In 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 a talk, I allow to myself to put something uh, not important uh, under the carpet. Yeah, just to save time, and also to <laughs> to make it simpler for for listeners. But you are right. You can do combinatorics in a stupid way. You can do it more efficient and less efficient, and uh, people are playing with it a bit. You have some choices with combinatorics, obviously. Uh, moreover. Uh, difference of few algorithms is like a program uh, in programming, a C program, when compiler, there are more effective compilers and less effective. If it's less effective, it just says to a processor to stop and wait uh, until it's sure that it can do the next operation. The same happens with this algorithm. Uh, in some versions, they are not sure that they can proceed, they, they do some combinatorial steps much more than needed. So we just blow up divisor, for example, a few times, just just idle operation. So there are some nuances, but the main machine engine of algorithm is the same. The um, uh, choice of maximal contact and so on is completely the same. Everywhere. Which is due to Ronak, yeah, this is in the Ronak. Uh... Yeah, uh, but in, uh, in Hironaka, but, it was it was implicit, and when Hironaka himself worked on it uh, many years to, to make it simpler and so on, so it took yeah, the, a lot he, of time there is paper, to refine. Yeah. There is this paper on idealistic exponents. I mean, where he introduces in 1977, he introduces certain things. It didn't, doesn't give the algorithm, but when then one can uh, uh, actually get a course where he gave this that I heard about this and. So this is closely related to this uh, algorithm. Uh, idealistic, algorithm. correct. Idealistic exponents are marked ideals. This is the yes. ideal, the idea to consider marked ideals, and not yes. just, just ideal. Idealistic expo exponent is precisely this marking. Yeah. So he had some. There is reduction step that he men you mentioned. He occurs in his. Uh, yeah, and he also wrote the paper later in the early 2000s about this. What I mean. Just a very stupid question. Uh, I'd like to come back to um, uh, your result about uh, um, making a morphism good by modifying the, the base. I, I don't remember. Uh, can, uh, can, can I come back to, to that result? Uh, so you uh, have an F, and then the is F it, point is, is deduced from, uh, from F by some modification of the base, and it is good. Is, is it is it is it this slide? Uh, the new ingredient is that there is. Uh, uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, look, there, there was no in? log, uh, no log involved at, at the beginning, uh, maybe, and then you. No log. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, was it so in altered it, resolution or in uh, classical? Yes, uh, altered resolution. Maybe, in altered yes. resolution, it was. So, so I don't remember which assumption you you have on your uh, x to y, or maybe no, no, it's not so technical. Yeah. So my my my, uh, my question was that you have an f uh, from x to y, which is not good. And uh, you make uh, a y prime to y, which is a modification, so yes. that the pullback uh, somehow is uh, is uh, uh, some log uh, log goodness. Or maybe you also you have to modify a little bit the the, the source. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I feel. Uh, yeah, uh, look, is it, is it this this theorem? Uh, maybe yes. That uh, 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 morphism. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so. Yes. so it's it's a yeah. modification uh, or alteration of both mm -hmm. schemes 
but you also but you, use you, you blood start pressure. With, so you stop FH block scheme. So well, the underlying scheme is, is there any assumption there or some uh, overall field or not? Uh, no uh, where uh, I assume that X is a finite type of a QE, QE surface. Over a QE surface. Why is the excellent surface? Why is the excellent surface? Yes. Oh. So I, I was wondering whether you could use this sort of result or related result to prove, uh, for example, uh, uh, there is a Fabrice's uh, theorem about uh, making the generalized R psi of F uh, becomes good after uh, modification of the base. So I wonder whether this sort of, uh, of result could be. Uh, uh. Of course, you have in the in the, in the in Fabrice, uh, in the theorem of Fabrice, you have a sheaf, but uh, maybe uh, the constant sheaf is already. Uh, yeah, I sort of uh, then, uh, then maybe you have this x to y, and then the uh, upside of x, uh, let's say, over, over y is not good, but by modifying y, you, you make it uh, become good. And uh, if the morphism you modify is uh, uh, becomes good, then the upside will become, is, uh, of course, good. So yeah, I, I was okay. wondering. Okay, I'm not prepared to answer, but <laughs> did I hear the author told that he thought about this? No, no. So anyway, there is there is an approach uh, in Orgogo's paper. He uses uh, a relative dimension one. So, uh, so it, it is very it, it is closely re related to what you're doing with the fabrication in curve and things like yeah, that. So no, yeah. What I'm saying is that instead of you, in, in there is some complicated induction and the vibration in other curves, but instead if you can somehow prove the same thing, I think, by reducing to the case where you have a FS log structure and some sum on both uh, X and Y and some uh, log smooth may be saturated. And of course the, the stratification, uh, the ship is constructible related to some stratification compatible with the yes, log structure yes. and some tameless, mm -hmm. suitable tameless mm -hmm. condition on the ship. Mm -hmm and then proves that for this class of shapes, then you have uniformly that, I mean, that the R psi, this kind of version of this in uniformity, that uh, mm -hmm. you have constructibility of R psi and also uh, in the your, in your second paper, in the, the other paper, yes. maybe. Um, yes, so it's, it's, uh -huh. it's possible to sum up, but of course you have to develop a lot of log things to, to state, and then of course the, to, to actually check that the R psi is good to compute the upside in certain situation and sometimes it is very useful to use test cabinet to use already the result of so i think but i think in, in theory it's possible to 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 do it uh, somehow just by improving the world morphism and but it, it it's kind do of do you think that the, the, the michael's uh, result might help me no, no, what I'm speaking about is all the ideas that don't, don't use as much as this, but just uses uh, the, the young uh, uh, approach, I mean, uh, to, to, to alter, uh, but without uh, all this, uh, uh, I mean, th this is, uh, here you want to control, uh, well, I'm satisfying just with the log smooth saturated morphism and as a pro, as a, as a, mm -hmm. And here he wants to have better, and also he wants control on the degree, and he wants to have uh, log uh, regular. Well, I don't know. In, okay, he has so more maybe, things maybe that he I, wants. I, I stop here because <laughs> it becomes too, too technical. Yeah, I, I want to But I also wondered about this theorem. Uh, so I, I asked a question about whether x prime and y prime are integral. Now, if you have this. When you etai localize, of course, the being a, a, a irreducible is is changed. So it's kind of strange that. Ah, maybe, so okay. Uh, I see. I, I, I see what you are saying. But if uh, structure is not the risk, okay. Yeah, maybe you are right. Maybe maybe one has to consider. Yeah, but maybe one has to consider components. You are right. Yeah. So I think that's all from. Okay. So. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, yeah, I was just saying. Thank you.